y'all got some time left. Bring them back. No, I'm just kidding. How's everybody doing? Good. I, I'm going to call up my, my bud, my pal, Pastor Tabitha Banks. Amen. Amen. Listen, we just want to say, first of all, we want to say Merry Christmas to everybody. Um, it, uh, obviously, we may not see you before Wednesday. We want you to keep Jesus at the forefront of your Christmas. Amen. Amen. Let's give it up for the babies. Didn't they do good? Amen. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to let Pastor Tab just wish you a Merry Christmas for a second. Amen. Afternoon, God chasers. I have a cough drop in my mouth. Y'all excuse me. I apologize. Merry Christmas, too. I pray that this season that you really understand that the greatest gift is Christ Jesus. Regardless of what's under your tree, he is the greatest gift 365 days a year. Amen. So the greatest thing that you can give anyone that you love is an introduction to Christ. Amen. So do not feel like you don't have anything to give this season. You do. You absolutely have the greatest gift. So I want to wish you and your family a very safe and a very happy um, and Merry Christmas. Amen. You enjoy good food and good t company together. God bless you. Amen. Amen. It is our prayer that you guys uh, celebrate Jesus this Christmas. And so we've been celebrating Jesus all month long, right? We've been talking about the We've been talking about the game changer. Who's the game changer? Now, is there any witness in here that when Jesus came into your life, the game changed, that everything changed when he came into it? Can we just take 30 seconds and recognize God? Can we take 30 seconds and recognize? Before we go any further in this service, can we just take 30 seconds and say, God, thank you for changing my life. I thank you for 2019. I thank you for everything I went through in 2019. I know it was a little crazy, it was a little turbulent, but if I didn't have you, I don't know where I would be. Come on, we just gonna celebrate Jesus. We're gonna celebrate Jesus in here. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. And so I, I, wanna, I want you to feel free today. We're gonna do a little worshiping. Um, I wanna celebrate who God has been, not only to us personally, myself and my wife, but who God has been to this church all 2019 and so instead of you know doing a whole bunch of um i'll be careful a whole bunch of regalia i i, I just want to spend a little time talking about jesus can we do that can we do that today okay so first i want to talk about what jesus is doing through god chasers through this church this church has been a game changer for so many people and I, we told you guys but we've had about 150 families come through and be fed by our food bank this year. Amen. And so we want to celebrate that. So we're going to play uh, just a short video and celebrate the food bank. Jesus said, whatever you did for the least of these, you did for me. As God chasers, we have always had the heart to serve the least, the broken, the hungry, and the forgotten. This year, we took that mission to another level. Through your generous donations and our partnership with the San Antonio Food Bank, God Chasers has been able to serve over 9,000 pounds of food to people in need right here in our community. In 2020, our goal is to serve 50,000 pounds of food. We couldn't do this without you. It is your love and your heart for people that allows us to be God's hands and feet in our community. In 2019, we made a dent. In 2020, we'll make a difference. Thank you for helping us to serve God's people. Thank you to each and every person that's been a part of that, um, serving and partnering with the San Antonio Food Bank. But today, today if you are in need, after church, all you have to do is stop by the table. There's still food. There is still a lot of food available to you. There's no reason for anyone to leave here today knowing that you need food. 
and not receive. Amen? This is because of the partnership. It's because of the belief of the things that we desire to do here. God chasers, this is how we give, right? We give in love. Love gives. So if you are in need, it's a small piece of paper that you fill out. Nobody checks anything. You tell us. We finish. We fill out the paperwork with you. Fill it out completely, and you leave with a 30-pound box of food. Amen? So if you are in need, I promise you the people that serve will serve you with love and dignity like they do every Sunday. You just stop by the table, fill out your paperwork, and leave so that you and your family will have. Amen? God bless you. Amen. Can y'all give it up for my baby? I want to say that one more time, just so you understand, you do not have to leave here. If you, if you and your family need food, we want you to carry away a 30-pound bo uh, box of food today. And it is because of the giving level at God Chasers that we're able to do things like this. Listen, if you're a giver here, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for what you've given. And as we celebrate Jesus, uh, and I'll talk about this a, more, a little bit more in a, in a second, but as we celebrate Jesus, this is how we celebrate Jesus. By, by looking like Jesus, by serving others. The last time we saw our Savior, our Messiah, he was on his knees washing feet, amen? So I think it's our responsibility to wash feet. So as a church, we're going to wash feet, amen? I need some more amens today. I don't know why y'all not with me today. As a church, we're going to wash feet, amen? Amen. And I, and I want y'all to put that out to your social media, to, to whoever. When they get out of whatever church they go to, they can come here to God Chasers, and we will give them a box of food. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, that's worthy of praise. Amen. I want to call up uh, Jordan really quickly. Jordan, if you're here. Oh, there he is. He's on the front row. Everybody say, hey, Jordan. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Amen. Those boots are the bomb. Boy, that's this brother good. That's good up here, man. So, so um, I want to just talk for a second about some of the things that God Chasers has been doing, some of the things that we're going to do. But um, uh, I want to just give y'all, can I just give y'all a little preview about 2020 for God Chasers? They don't want it, though. I might just skip this part. Can I give y'all a preview about 2020 for God Chasers? I just want to show you your church. I want to show you the value of your church and, and what we've got going on. The food bank is one part. Uh, this is something we're about to do. I, I, I got another. Let's show the video. Come on. <laughs> God chasers, how y'all doing? Good afternoon. So we just want to give y'all a rough draft of what's going on, something powerful that God is doing at God Chasers. So me and PD, we had lunch and we talked about what God has given him, a vision, right? But this vision has not just been through him, but also through us and through myself. So I'm just so excited and I'm just in awe of what God is doing here. Listen, listen. For just a moment, I need you all to be with me for just a moment. Got it? All right, we're going to start off like this. Okay, so that was just a rough draft of what's about to take place. See, we have to be together in order for this theme to work. See, Hebrews 11, verse 1 talks about faith, this theme called faith. See, it is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But when God gives you a vision... When God gives you a vision, then you have to walk. You got to run, God chases, and you got to be alive in what God is doing. Amen. So, pursuit is not new. It has already 
begun. So we are just putting in more work, more effort for God to take root and for us to grow in him. Hallelujah. So thank you so much for being a part of this wonderful and great thing that we're about to do. Hallelujah. Thank you. That's so good. Thank you. Y'all give it up for Jordan, please. So one of the things I talked to Jordan about, and uh, we were going to keep it a secret until 2020, but we're just going to put it out. We're going to buy a bus. We're just going to go to every college and just start picking up kids and bringing them to church. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go all around this city, right, Jordan? We're going to go all around this city. We're going to get Jordan a CDL license so he can just... <laughs> so Tabitha and I, we've been pricing our buses right, baby. What a crazy thing. Who, who knew? <laughs> who knew that when we said we were going to start a church, that we were going to spend our evening on Facebook Marketplace looking at buses. Come on, but we doing this for the glory of God, amen, so that somebody can be saved, so that somebody can be changed. How many of you know that this church is a game changer for some people? I want you to understand that this church has been a game changer for some people. And as we get ready to honor God with our gifts, we just wanted to exemplify some of the some of the some of the people that God has changed the game for just this year. And so I want to introduce you to somebody. I want to introduce you to Mariah. God Chasers has been a game changer for me since day one. The day before I attended God Chasers for the first time, um, I held in a lot of darkness and sadness. That day was very rough for me. I uh, um, just couldn't take it anymore. I was fed up and I almost committed suicide. Uh, if it wasn't for a friend constantly telling me about how great this church was, I would never have even thought about going. The first day we were at George Gervin, and at first I was a little hesitant because it was in a school. Uh, I was confused, but walking in it was very inviting and welcoming. I remember PK was doing a piece on subtraction and how you need to subtract the negative out of your life. And for some reason it really stuck to me. And it was like once I went, I wanted to come back and keep coming back. It, it made me feel like I wasn't alone. Yeah, every time I come in, I'm welcomed with hugs and I miss you. And even if I haven't been every Sunday, people still miss me, ask me how I'm doing, and that really means a lot. Even though I can't be there every Sunday, I still manage to catch the live or get random text messages throughout the day that really encourage me and lift me up. I'm just thankful for everybody at God Chasers. God Chasers has really been a game changer in my life. My name is Mariah and I am a God Chaser. Come on, can we give God praise? Come on, come on, this is the reason for the season. This is why we're here. This is why we're here. Change lives. God chases, y'all not celebrating God enough for me. That little girl said, I almost committed suicide. You don't realize what God is doing in and through you. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus at this place. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody is alive today because of what you do here. Jesus was able to use you, thank you, Jesus, was able to use you to save a life. Come on, I'm just for 30 more seconds, can we celebrate Jesus? Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen in 
and that's not all. I, I want to introduce you to somebody else. Can you meet Ebony for me? Can you just meet Ebony real quickly? Amen, church. We have a beautiful testimony, please. Focus this way. This is Sister Ebony. Everybody say hi, Sister Ebony. Please present to us your testimony. My mother was an evangelist, and my father was a hellraiser. At the age of 15, I became pregnant. I became a mother at 16. I left home, my covering, and my protection too soon. I was just a young girl when I began to encounter trials, tribulation, and life, and all of life's lessons. I soon learned that life was no joke. I became a stripper, a drug runner, a drug user, a gang banger, and soon after I was a convicted felon. But my mother never stopped praying for me. James 5 and 16 states that the prayer of a righteous person has power and produces wonderful results. Fast forward to 2017, I was introduced to God Chases Community Church. I must say, straight up, this church was a game changer for me. After being introduced to God Chasers, I began to learn how to trust again. I began to seek God for myself. It gave me hope. I began to have a vision and clarity. PD's messages gave me direction. I then began to hold myself accountable. His messages also gave me affirmation of God's word for me, my life, my children, and my children's children. So I pray for them now like my mama prayed for me. I am forever grateful because every day God has given me the opportunity to turn away from my sin. I am not perfect, but I am radically changed person. I want to say thank you, God. Thank you to my pastors, and thank you, God, chasers. Come on, somebody give God praise for that. I, I'm sorry. I said give God praise for that. Okay, that was three people. Maybe God ain't been good to you, but for the rest of us, for the rest of us who were stuck in fornication, stuck in drug addiction, stuck in that boy's house, stuck in that girl's house, beaten, abandoned, rejected, dejected, I'm talking to you. Give God a praise like you know he saved me from myself. Some of y'all have been more damaged to yourself than anybody else, but God changed your life and now you will never be the same. Look at your neighbor and say, I'll never be the same. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, uh, I can tell you, I, I mean, I have a testimony all of my own, but I'll wait until the next time to do mine. But we have some beautiful God chasers here uh, who are going to introduce themselves and then really just share with you how God has changed the game in their life and used God chasers to do that. Will you receive them right now? Amen. Amen. I'm Pastor Niles Best, and God chasers has changed the game. Uh, and has been a, uh, a family away from family, a home away from home. And it has given me, a, it's hard to find a tribe with your DNA. And to have the same DNA, you're able to move forward and you're able to dream again. So I thank God for God Chasers. Amen. I'm Gina Best. He took what I was going to say first. But... Uh, I love the sense of community and family here because a lot of people move here from other places and people are always looking for a church home and you can go to places and you're not accepted necessarily, but here you are definitely accepted. You're included. Everybody's like family and I love it. It changed the game for me and I, I really believe in this house and the vision of this house and a place to be able to connect and serve. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Frank Coffa. Um, the month before finding God Chasers, I shouldn't be here. Um, I made bad decisions um, two different times. Um, I was ready to deal with God's wrath because I know better. Um, I was broken. And the love here brought me back. Everybody. my name is Maria I just want to say thank you God chasers because because of you and the, the your love 
gift of friendship has helped someone who was so lost. I mean, you have, I was just so lost. I didn't have a rhyme or reason. I just woke up and I was a zombie in my soul. And this place has transformed everything for me. Thank you. My name is Crystal Alexander. When I was 14 years old, the church that I grew up in kicked me out. By excommunicating me, they isolated me from my social network and cut me off from a God that I loved. I was a child, and I believed them when, I, when they told me that my sin made me ugly in God's sight. I thought it was God that was kicking me out of the kingdom of heaven. For 20 years, I lived life as if hell was a guarantee, an unavoidable fate until I found God chasers. And now I know that God loves me. He does not hate me. And there is no sin too ugly for God's grace. There is no habit too big for God's healing. And there is no label too strong for God's love. How you doing? I'm Jamil. Um, I was brought here from to a lot of churches and you hear the word and it can you can hear it but you don't feel it and when PD spoke it really hit me and it, it brought me back to the church I had things those things started disappearing because I wasn't close to God and now I can feel so much closer a month ago I was in, a, in an accident that I should have been dead arms around me and if it wasn't for him I just would I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. Well I started going to this church a long long time ago and it was just me going to this church and I you know um, I gotta tell you the greatest blessing that I have is that I will sit y'all know I'm sitting on the edge I sit over there but I look out and I see my my children, I see my grandchildren, I want y'all to know I see y'all's children here and your mamas and your daddies and that's the blessing that I get because the seed that is laid at this church, the seed that is sown at this church, through that anointed man right there and the anointing that is on this church, follow it because I'm telling you the fruit that is going to come from it is nothing but a blessing for in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. My name is Dee Trust. I started back to God Tracy back home, man. When Pastor PD was talking about so and so, I thought that meant something completely different. I thought I was just getting my money. Well, what, what was he saying? That's what he was supposed to do because that's what I was taught. But to understand that you take that seed that you get and boom, you spend like what you do a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars, you get it so much. It taught me how to go back and really get to people. I was at a time in my life back then where I thought I wasn't going to be living. I was sick, but I was out here doing the ministry. I was doing nursery and teaching every Sunday, whether I was about to pass out when I was done, but I was still doing it because I didn't want that to beat me. My son got put into a behavior hospital. Hands down, the pastor didn't even see my son. And that was the most devastating time of my life. I cried and cried and cried, but they were there saying, I'm praying for you. I'm with you. So God changed the destiny of family away from home. I was a runner. Just because I'm sowing those seeds in everything that PD does, this church for me means so much. I love God, Tracy. Y'all are my family. And you are truly a family if you care about my son. Being a God chaser uh, has uh, been truly a game changer for me. Um, like she was saying, mainly it's because now I see family. I get to see my oldest grandson become a young man 
to a man, to a husband, and soon to be father. Man, that means the world to me. I get to see my daughter come, and I get to see her run around here, run around, and I know God is doing something in our life. And I thank God for that, for changing those lives. I can see my grandkids sit down that road and I look like this, and everyone got tears rolling down their eyes because they hear what the word is saying to them. And that's a game changer to me. And I thank God for changing the lives of my family. I, I thank through my family, through my son. And I thank God for allowing us to, uh, to, uh, to be where we are here at God Chase. And God Chase is truly a game changer for us. Amen. Can we thank these stories right here? Can we thank these stories? Come on, come on. Can we thank these stories? God is changing lives. God is changing lives through you. This is the reason to celebrate. This is why Jesus came. This is why Jesus came. This is why Jesus came. move on but it, it's tough for me to not get emotional when I hear my mom speak see you would have to know our story you would have to know our story to understand why that's valuable we come from a, a, a lineage of, uh, uh, we come from a family of drug addicts drug smokers drug dealers we come from a family of poverty I'm talking about poverty, poverty, poverty. We come from a family where we didn't, we didn't know what we was going to eat. And my mom would hear, hear my heart right here. She would get out in the street and try to figure out how she was going to feed our cho her children. And I would watch her go and hustle and borrow and, and, and beg and plead so she could feed her children. But now they call her children pastors. They call her children leaders. They call her evangelists. Now they call us bishops. And, 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 and all of a sudden, see, God will use, God is so good, he will change the whole game to where people who knew you back then won't recognize you right now because of what God did in your life. Can we just take 30 seconds and just praise God for how he changed the game? This is what God will do. God will make your family unrecognizable. People will be looking at you like, what happened? You say, I'm not the same no more. I'm not the same no more. I met a man named Chief. I met a man named Jesus. I met a man named Jesus. And he wasn't just a baby in a manger. He was a God on earth. And he came to change everything. I wish two or three of y'all would just clap your hands and celebrate Jesus in this place. He changes everything. He changes everything. He'll change your name. He'll change your station. He'll change your finances. He'll change your family. He'll change your children. He's a game changer. If you believe that, shout yes! Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want to do something else. Because we think we have one of the most giving and generous churches in this city. I, I wanted to bring people up and say, tell them about the time God Chase has paid your electricity bill. Tell them about the time God Chase has kept you in your apartment. Tell them about the time. I, I wanted to bring people up and do that, but my fear is that I don't want to embarrass the people. They got to tell their own story, amen? They got to tell their own story, but I would that you wouldn't hold it in. That if God did something for you through this church, in fact, if God just done anything for you through this church, can you just stand up for just 10 more seconds and just give God glory? 
If he changed your family through this church, if he blessed you through this, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah, Jesus. So, but I, I want to do something else because I, 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 I intend to preach for a minute today. I intend to preach for a minute today. Before we get there, I'm... Uh, my wife and I, we, we've been praying about this, and we wanted to bless some people. And um, we didn't want to make a spectacle of it. But we do want to be a witness to who God is. Amen. Babe, can you come up? Can you help my wife? We do want to be a witness to who God is and who God's been. So we want to do something in particular, and we... we <clears throat> We do this by faith. We do this by faith. We trust God. Oh, I wish I could get into this conversation. I, I need y'all to turn the lights on just for a second because I'm, I'm going to ask some people to come up here. But we do this by faith. We trust God and we say, God, how can we help your people this Christmas? Because the truth is some people came in here and they don't, they don't even have enough to buy their kids Christmas presents. They, they don't even have enough to feed their kids on Christmas. They don't know who they, they got to go over to some cousin house or some auntie house because they, they don't have enough to even supply for their kids on Christmas. And that's why we're doing the food bank again. If you need food, don't be prideful. Don't be uh, ashamed. We, we're here to serve you. Amen. We partnered with the food bank, purchased the food, picked it up, brought it here so that you guys could be blessed by it. But I just want to, we just want to do this. If you say Pastor Dante, I'm one of those people you were talking about. And I'm in a little financial trouble this year. And I need a blessing. Listen, we reach down into our coffers and we want to bless a few of you. So if that's you today, I, I want you to just don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. This is not a handout. It's a hand up. I'm not trying to give you a handout trying to give you a hand up. If that's you today, I want you to go and, and buy your kids Christmas presents. I want you to have food at your house for your family. If that's you, if, that, if that's you today, I want you to stand up and come up here and we have a gift for you. If that's you today. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Come on, if that's you today. Merry Christmas to you. God chasers say Merry Merry Christmas to you. 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 Come on, God chasers. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's celebrate Jesus. Act like you ever needed something in your life. Act like you ever needed something in your life. You say I can go to a church, I go to a house of God where the where the people are so generous that they'll love on us. The people are so generous that they'll make sure my kids have presents for Christmas. Come on, God chasers, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate Jesus. I'm still looking for at least one more person. D don't let pride keep you in your seat. I'm looking for you. Come up here. Don't let pride keep you in your seat. I'm thank you, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, God chase him. This is not about me. It's not about my wife. It's about what we can do together. See, God can do exponentially more with what you have in your hands than you can do with. God can do exponentially more. The Bible says one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. Today, I, I, I believe, thank you, Jesus, I believe that I, there shouldn't be any poor person in this church. I'm praying you out of poverty. I want to talk about this just for a second, Janet. I know I'm cutting into my time, but I want to talk about this just for a second. Because I tried to start my church in Stone Oak. 
I ain't lying. I tried to start, that's where I live. I tried to start a church in my neighborhood. And God said, no, 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 player. He said, I need you to show people how to get to Stone Oak. So I'm going to call you out of Stone Oak so you can show people how to get to Stone Oak. And I, I, I'm here today. Hear me, hear me right here. You know how I got to Stone Oak? I gave my way to Stone Oak. Yeah, I know. Something in your indignation can't believe that. But I gave my, when I was poor, I was generous. My mama taught us, no matter if you, if you came over our house, if we had one bowl of beans, we'll divide it in four to make sure everybody had something. Because we were generous. Does that make sense? God called me all the way back to, all the way back to Austin Highway. And he made it, he made it so, he made it free. <laughs> he gave us a building for free. We was paying a lot to be in Stone Oak, right? God said, okay, turn this down if you want to. And we moved all the way over. Now, I didn't know I was going to be taking up $69 offerings. Okay, laugh if you want to. Dominique, it's real when you turn that last 20 over and it's, you just flip it over. You think it's, that's the last one. 20, 40, 60. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And as a as a policy, we triple count. So now everybody in the room counting to 69. No, player. I want I need out of this room. Y'all draining my faith. I feel virtue leaving my body in this room. But it was because of, it was it was because God was gonna bring me to you. And God was going to bring people like me to you. Thank you, Jesus. People with a heart like mine to you. So I thank every God chaser with a heart like mine. Maybe you didn't come from poverty, but you have a heart to help people. You have a heart to serve people. And you know, uh, hit me right here. And you know what God called you to do and told you to do. I want to just thank you for a second. Can I clap for you? I just want to clap. Do me a favor, can you stand to your feet, find three people, give them a big hug, say, this is how we do church here. This is how we do church here. All right. All right, all right. There we go. Amen. All right. Do, do, I don't know who told y'all to sit down. Look at y'all. Y'all just disobedient. No, I'm kidding. You do me a favor. Stand to your feet. We stand for the reading of the word here. God chases. I just want to talk to you guys just for a few minutes. I want to talk to you just for a few minutes. And then um, we got some other little surprises. And then we're going to get out of here. Amen. Amen. But we're going to celebrate God today. We're going to celebrate Jesus with our worship. How many of you know worship is not just singing a song? Worship is more than just singing a song. Worship is not a couple of words, a, a little riff and a chord. Worship is a sacrifice. Somebody say worship is a sacrifice. We're going to worship God today. Turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 14, Mark chapter 14, verse 3. Mark chapter 14, verse 3. 
And I need everybody to hear me today. I need everybody to hear me today. Mark chapter 14, verse 6. We got it up? Good, beautiful. While he was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper, reclining at the table, somebody say, chilling out, maxing, and relaxing, all cool. Y'all so serious. <laughs> I'm going to go to King James. Y'all in King James, right? Yeah, y'all in King Jimmy. I'm going to go to King Jimmy. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, of spikenard, very, very precious. Look at somebody and say, it's very precious now. Very precious. You need to understand who you're sitting next to. It's very precious. She break the box. Somebody say break the box. And poured it out on his head. And there was some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of ointment made? Why are you wasting that? Why are you giving it over there? This is what a, what a waste. What a waste. You could have did so much more. You could have did so much more with that. You could have did so much more with those dimes. Why are you giving it over there? Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it, it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. That sound like, this sounds like how my Kind of like how my man Moggy talk. Still screaming that living. Let, let her alone. <laughs> Some of y'all ain't had no man Moggy's talk like that. Let her alone. I love that Jesus didn't say leave her be. You know, it's appropriate. Leave her be. He said, he said let her alone. <laughs> y'all so serious. Why trouble ye her? She had wrought a good work on me. For ye, have, for ye have the poor with you always. And whensoever ye will, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me, you'll not have me always. And she hath done what she could. Somebody say, I did what I could. I didn't do everything right, but I did what I could. I, I didn't do as much as my neighbor, probably not, but I did what I could. She is come beforehand to anoint my body to my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever the gospel is preached, wheresoever the gospel is preached, wheresoever the gospel is preached throughout the whole world, this also she hath done, this thing also that she had done shall be spoken of for a memorial. In Jesus' name, Father, I ask you bless this word. Bless this time together. Lord, I'm asking you to bless these people. Bless our worship on today, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. High five three people and go ahead and have your seat, amen. 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 Hey, y'all don't go nowhere. Y'all hang out for a second. For 10 minutes. That's all I got left. 10 minutes. So I want to talk to you guys today uh, 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 about where we're going. I want to talk to you guys about, about what we're going to do today because we're going to do something significant in this house today. We're going to worship God. Now, Pastor Dante, we always worship God, yeah, but we're, we're going to worship him in a different way. See, we allow y'all to cheat. Ooh, Jesus. We allow you to cheat your worship, and that's okay because we expect everybody to worship from their own heart, but the Bible says that your heart is where your treasure is. And so we want to we want to we want to give you an opportunity instead of buying another TV instead of doing another thing buying your your child another toy what we want to do is give you an opportunity to worship God and we're going to worship God in our giving can somebody celebrate God for that we're going to worship God in our giving today <laughs> See as this church we recognize that God can do exp exponentially more with what we put in his hands 
So we're going to put a gift into God's hands. Now, every time you see our Savior, hear me right here, every time you see our Savior, he's giving. He is the most giving Savior ever. But these two times in the Bible, there's something very significant. I talked about the first time that the Magi showed up. Somebody say the Magi. The Magi showed up, and they showed up with gifts for the Savior. So at his birth, there is a gift present. And then uh, Mary shows up at his time of death, and she presents him with a gift. So at his death, there is a gift present. We, we recognize these two moments as his birth and his death. But every time we come to Jesus, we should have a gift. What is your worship? What is your offering? And we want to significantly celebrate Jesus on today in relation to that. But Pastor Dante, wh why am I doing this? Be because I need you to understand something. That God wants to use what's in your hands so he can see what's in your heart. God uses what's in your hands so he can see what's in your heart. That's why he gave us that scripture. Wherever your treasure goes, that's where your heart goes. You want to know what you love? Look at your bank account. Just scan through it. Just scan through it real quick. Whatever is in there predominantly, that's what you love. And, and I, I, I want to get some of y'all in trouble. Because some of y'all love Xbox. Y'all love DC. What's this stuff called? I'm, I'm just, some of y'all love lip gloss, Mac. Where y'all go now? Do y'all still go to Mac? I'm going to get in trouble. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get in trouble. My lip gloss is popping. My lip gloss is cool. <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble. But whatever it is that you love, that, that's where your resource goes to. Some of y'all again, I, I tell y'all, y'all know what, what my bank account looked like? It looked like Tabitha, 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 Tabitha. Dominique Savon. Tabitha, 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 Tabitha. Tabitha bank account looked like Tabitha, Tabitha. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, her bank account looks like, looks like Dante, Dante, Dante. Because you give where you love. And so I, I, I want to I deal with this for a second because some of us have love in places that are not worthy of love. Some of us show love and, play, and, and your bank account is a reminder of what you love. It's a reminder of what you love, but I, it, it's not a reminder of what that thing is worth, okay? Listen, I want to talk to you about worship today, but if I can't talk to you about worship without talking to you about worthship. Because you ascribe value to a thing with your worship. Somebody say, I ascribe value to it. It matters to me because of how I do it. When I, the way I look at it, what, the, what I pay for it, lets you know how much it means to me. Are y'all with me today? And so I, I can't talk to you about worship without talking to you about worship. So this young lady shows up with her box. Now she has an alabaster box. Now the, this is a beautiful thing because the box would have been made of alabaster. So the box itself was expensive. Somebody say the box is expensive. But the oil in the box was more expensive. They didn't complain about the box. They complained about the oil. I need you to understand something because there's oil. There's oil on the inside of you. There's purpose on the inside of you. And God is trying to get to the purpose, but you have purpose locked in a box. You have purpose locked. What does that mean, Pastor Dante? I've locked my purpose in a box, and the only way God can get to your purpose is that he breaks the box. So what does that look like? It looks like me. We talk about this all the time. This is what fasting looks like. Sacrifice. It's not about starving. It's about sacrifice. Are y'all with me today? This is what it looks like. It look, this is what it looks like to give of yourself. This is what we call breaking the box, when I break the box, when I do a thing that hurts because it matters, oh, hear me right here, when I give when it hurts because it matters, I, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm exercising my ability to break the box because I know what's more, what, I know that what's inside the box is more valuable than the box itself. So she shows up and she says, now, now, what I'm going to put my oil on is more important than my oil. Are y'all with me today? 
What I'm going to pour my oil on is more important than my oil. Now, if you think your oil is the most important thing, then you could chill. But I don't think my oil is the most important thing. In fact, I think I have a steady supply of oil. I think oil is still coming. And if I can figure out how to pour out the oil I have, I'll get fresh oil. Oh, hear me right here. If I can figure, there's a young lady. Uh, there's a young lady that, that in, in, in the Old Testament, there's a young lady who is starved. Her and her family is starved. They don't have anything. And she says, we're, we're about to die. And the, the prophet tells her, go back to your house, look in the cupboard, and see what you have. Let me let, me let you know something. You got something in your cupboard. I want to help you right here. There's something in your cupboard. Each and every one of us is here with purpose. There's something in your cupboard. God did not send you here empty. You may feel empty, but you're not empty. And oftentimes... The, you're letting the last little bit of something disqualify you from a fresh pour. Because God loves empty vessels. God uses empty vessels. So as I pour myself out, then God replenishes me. He pours more into me. Are y'all with me today? So, so he said, go to your house. There's something in your house. You, I need you to use something in your house. Listen, I, if you believe that there's something in your house, can you just clap three times real quick? Y'all disobedient, y'all. Woo! <laughs> because you know that there's something in your cupboard. There's something in your house. You are not empty. You are not lost. Listen, I want to help you right here because a lot of times you think because you lost a boyfriend or you lost a girlfriend or you lost a job that you are lost. No, you are not lost. There's still something else in your cupboard. And I wish you would just wake up. I'm going to take a pause from this. I wish you would just wake up in the morning and say, thank you, Jesus. If I woke up, it's because there's something else in my cupboard. I got more. God can use me. Listen, God, I raise my hand. If you want to use somebody, use me. There's more in my cupboard. There's more inside of me than even I think I know. There's something greater inside of me. He said, go to that cupboard. He said, when you get that oil in that cupboard, he said, what I want you to do is, is take the oil and pour it into empty vessels. Remember, we just talked about this. You don't qualify for the poor unless you're empty. You don't qualify for the poor unless you're empty. He said, pour it out into empty vessels. And so she starts to pour it into empty vessels. And he said, when you run out of vessels, borrow some more from your neighbors. And he said, as a matter of fact, go find as many vessels as you can get so you can pour into. Oh, you stop pouring because your heart got broke. Oh, you stop pouring because I can't trust those people. I want to just help somebody. Oh, you stopped pouring because you, 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 you didn't realize that something supernatural was happening with your poor. You only saw the natural. But God said, no, I'm doing something supernatural. And if you will release yourself to the poor, the Bible says that God told her, go, uh, the prophet told her, borrow not a few. Go get as many as you can. Go get as many as you can. Go get as many. Listen, it is our mission here at this church to tell as many people as we can about Jesus Christ. It is our mission at this church to take the ministry to as many people as we can so that these stories don't just get stuck inside these four walls. So that these stories, do you know that by the end of the week, hear me right here, that by the end of the week, over 2,000 people have watched our live stream? You thought it was just the 200 in this room. No, but God is using you. God is using you. He's using your church to help people, to heal people. So when you sow here, you're not just pouring oil on the ground. You're pouring it into something that matters. But you got to understand worth. The Bible says that when, he, when she had poured all that she could pour, and then she stopped pouring, the oil stopped flowing. Some of y'all are wondering why the oil stopped flowing in your life. It's because you stopped pouring. It said, he who wants friends should show himself friendly. You got to keep pouring. Oh, y'all thought that was just about money. No, it's about oil. 
It's about value. It's about what's on the inside of you. And whatever's on the inside of you that is valuable, that is worth something, you pour it out. But you always pour it out on something that is worth more than the oil itself. Are y'all with me today? So she understood worthship. I want you to understand something. I want you to start calculating worthship because you, you are wasting time with things that are not worth anything. I'm not talking about your rest or whatever, but I want you to think about worthship. Somebody say worthship. Listen, Jesus is worth more than anything that you have. The, the giver is worth more than the gift. I want you to understand something. So when she walks into this room, she understands that there is nothing that I can do to pay him back for what he's done for me. And I know there's two or three people in here that can say there's nothing I can do. There's not an amount that I can give that can pay Jesus back for how good he's been to me. He's been too good to me. He's been too kind to me. He's been too gracious to me. And there is literally nothing I could do to reward him. So I just pour my oil. See, this is real worship. Real worship starts when the music stops, when there is no Casey, when there is no Steve, when there is no JJ, when you all by yourself and all you got is all you have to give. And you say, God, this is all I have. Here's my worship, God. Here's my heart. Here, whatever I have here, I, I, I'm broken. I'm down on my knee. This is what messed up relationships will do. It'll teach you how to worship. <laughs> what ex-boyfriends will do, they'll teach you how to worship. Lord Jesus, I'm trying to help somebody. This is what, what exes will do, they'll teach you how to worship. Because I got to pour out what valuable thing I have left, but I got to pour it on something that's worth more than what I have. Are y'all with me today? This is the kind of worshiper that God seeks. This is the kind of worshiper that God seeks. The kind that just says, I need Jesus. I, what I have is not valuable. And what I have is not more valuable than what I need. Hear me right here. What I have is not more valuable than what I need. So I need Jesus. I'm going to turn my life over to Jesus. I'm going to give my time to Jesus. I'm going to give my energy to Jesus. I'm going to give my life to Jesus. I need Jesus. Somebody say, I need Jesus. So my worship should reflect his worship. That's my first point. Y'all ready for the second one? Yeah. I'm over my time, so I might as well keep going. Uh, my worship should reflect my warfare. What if your worship was a reflection of the hell that you had been through? What if when you came here, you would stop pretending and stop trying to be cute and, 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 and really worship on a level that the enemy is attacking you on? I, I just need two or three worshipers that agree with me. The enemy is attacking me right here, but I'm worshiping down here. No, I'm going to raise my praise. I'm going to raise my praise to the place where the... As far as the enemy is going to come, that's how far I'm going to go. And when the enemy is attacking me up here, I'm not going to praise down here. I'm going to raise my praise to the level of my warfare. My worship should look like my warfare. That's why everybody can't understand. It. Oh, man, y'all not with me. That's why everybody can't understand why I pour what I pour. That's why everybody can't understand how I worship like I worship, why I lift my hands. That's why you can't understand why everybody else is running around the church, but I'm crying the whole service. My worship reflects my warfare. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I've been through. And that, that, hear me right here, and that activity should cause something on the inside of me to raise up. I can't stand here with my hands in my pocket. I can't stand here with my arms. You don't know what I've been through. My worship is going to reflect my warfare. See, you can't judge my worship if you don't know my warfare. Why does this matter, PD? Because you, you don't know who Mary Magdalene is. You don't know her life. You don't know what she's been through. See, this is not the first scene that we've ever seen Mary Magdalene. We saw her earlier. We saw her earlier in the book. We saw her earlier in the story when, when she had been dragged away from an adulterous affair. And they dragged her away. Some people, they said they caught her in an adulterous affair. Where was you to where you could catch somebody in an adulterous affair? 
So you couldn't clap right there because you ain't never had no peeping toms in your life trying to figure out everything that's going on with you when they need to be working out their own self-salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible said they grabbed her and they dragged her and they threw her down in front of Jesus. And they said this woman has been caught in an adulterous affair. I love that too. Where was the man? She can't adulterate by herself. They dragged her down and sometimes people will, oh, hear me right here. Sometimes people will isolate you for the same sin that they'll let other people get away with. But they want to, so they drag, I don't have time to preach it like I want to preach it. So they had, they, they dragged her and they threw her down in, in front of Jesus. And they said, okay, what are we to do with her? And I love this, that the Bible says that Jesus just started writing in the sand. Now, we don't actually know what he wrote, but I, I think I got an idea, Dominique. I think he started writing day stuff in the sand. Because you got to remember when you're judging somebody else's stuff, that you got some stuff. I know you think nobody don't know, but Jesus know that you got some stuff. So, so the Bible says he saw, why do I think he was writing day stuff? Because Bible, the Bible says from the oldest to the youngest, they start backing out of there. <laughs> they gotta, sometimes you got to be old enough. Jesus writes in the sand, June 30th, 12, 12. You're like, excuse me, I got to. <laughs> July 25th. <laughs> you start saying, oh, no, I know. I remember that date. Okay, I'm. I love that. We got a Jesus that'll write in the sand on your behalf. He'll get rid of your enemies. Oh, hear me right here. He'll write in the sand on your behalf. So, so this is the first story that we hear about her. And, and th there's another story in Matthew where the Bible says she has seven demons cast out of her. Somebody say seven demons. She didn't just have one demon cast out of her. She had seven demons cast out of her. Sometimes you got to thank God for what he did in your life. You people don't know what I was dealing with eternally. You don't know internally. You don't know what, what happened when I showed up to this church this day. And you thought just because I had a resting uh, mean face. You didn't recognize that Jesus was delivering me and that there was demons on the inside of me and God was pulling them out. Every song is pulling them out. Every hug is pulling them out. Every word from the preacher is pulling them out. I wish somebody would just celebrate God for freedom right now to say that I've been delivered. Not only did God rescue me from the hands of my enemy, from the hands of my accuser, but he delivered me from what had me bound. Oftentimes what happens here is that we get rescued, but we don't get delivered. Why are we dealing with the same stuff over and over? We've been rescued from the accusers, but we haven't been delivered. God said it's beautiful that you've been rescued, but now it's time to be delivered. Third thing that happened, y'all don't understand, is that her brother died. See, Mary Magdalene is the same Mary who was at the tomb when they said Lazarus is sick. Lazarus is sick. Lazarus is sick. And they sent a message to Jesus and he said, I'm on my way. But it took him two more days to get there. It took him two extra days to get there. Because Jesus said, I don't want to just heal Lazarus from sickness. I want to raise Lazarus from the dead. Would you let God let your life be a testimony? You might have to die so that your life can be a testimony. Is, is there anybody here that's just saying, God, use me. I'm available. Use me. Use me, Jesus. Her brother died. The Bible says that Jesus loved Lazarus so much and he loved those people so much. We get the shortest verse in the, in the scripture. Y'all can come on. Y'all can come on. I'm almost done. We get the shortest verse in the scripture when Jesus shows up to this place where Lazarus is dead and everybody's mourning. And I love that we serve a God that'll mourn when we mourn, that'll cry when we cry. That he, he, the Bible says you don't serve a God who has not been touched by the infirmities of man. He said, I'll mourn when you mourn. And he showed up to that grave site. Hmm, Jesus. 
Is there anybody here who God showed up to your grave site? See, see, I want you to hear this because people thought you was dead and they buried you. They put you behind a rock. They buried you. And I love that Jesus comes up and for the first time you hear him say this because he's going to say it again. For the first time you hear him say, roll the stone away. Oh, Jesus. For the first time you hear him say, roll the stone away. And then he calls out there and he says, Lazarus, come out of there. Now you got to imagine being married. Because you ain't never seen this before. You ain't never seen anybody be resurrected. Some of y'all don't think Jesus could do it in your life because you ain't never seen it before. That's why I had to call up these testimonies. So you can understand that the same God who delivered them can deliver you. You got to understand. Jesus yells in there, Lazarus, come out. And by this time, I bet you Mary's heart is broken. Her heart is all messed up. Because she like, Jesus is making a fool, a mockery out of what happened to my family. Making a mockery. This is in John chapter 11. In John chapter 11, he making a mockery of what's it. See, see, the first, the real danger of sin is not hell, it's shame. The real danger of sin is not hell, it's shame. And if the enemy can get you to be ashamed, then he'll get you to hide. If he can get you away from God, he can get you to hide yourself. So the first question that God ever asked, ever, ever, in all of existence, in all of eternity is, where are you? That's my question for you today, Mary. Where are you? The Bible says that Jesus raised her brother from the dead. In chapter 11, Jesus raised her brother from the dead. So by John chapter 12, where this story is, in John chapter 12, she is coming to pour out of her oil on somebody who rescued her from her enemies, on somebody who delivered her from her demons, and on somebody who she watched raise her brother, her sister, her friend, her cousin, her mama, her granny from the grave. Listen, this is what witness is all about. So, so my worship should reflect my worship, his, his worship. My worship should reflect my warfare. But my worship should also reflect my witness. God is using you as a witness. The Greek word for witness is this. It's martus. Somebody say martus. What's that, What's that Pastor Dante? Well, martus means two things. It means to witness something, to see it happen. To witness something amazing, to see something amazing happen. And the second thing, you know what it means? It means to be a witness of something amazing that happens. That means that when I go to court and testify, oh, hear me right here. When I stand up in court and testify, I'm testifying about what I saw firsthand. I think God is calling some of y'all to be witnesses today. To be martyrs. And your worship should reflect your witness. Not only for what God did, what you saw him do in other people's life, but for what he did in your life. Can anybody just testify that God did something significant in my life? I, 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 can, I, I can testify that he helped my mama. I can testify that he helped my sister. I can testify that he helped my grandmother. But the best martyrs I could be is to say what he did for me. He changed my life. He delivered me. He called me out of darkness into his marvelous life. And my worship is going to reflect his worship. And my worship is going to reflect my warfare. But most of all, my worship is going to reflect my witness. He did it for me. He did it for me. He did it for me. He didn't just do it for my mama. He did it for He didn't just do it for Pastor Kev. He did it for me. He didn't just do it for the people at God's church. He did it for me. For me. My worship reflects it. See, this is what this church is for. Martyrs. This is what we do this for. Martyrs. Somebody say martyrs. Witness. Can you testify? Can you testify about what God has done in your life? I know everything's not perfect. 
But has anybody been resurrected here? Has anybody been delivered here? Hear me right here. Has anybody been rescued just from the shame of your enemies? I, I want to I I ask some people to stand. Listen, every time you've ever sown to this church, you've been a witness. Every time you've ever given, whether it was $5 or $50 or $500 or $5,000, you've been a witness. I want you to pray today about what your witness will be. As we break into worship, I want you to pray today about what your witness will be. But first, I want to do something. Listen, if you are April 6th, please stand up on your feet. If you've been here since April the 6th, 2014, please stand up on your feet. Now, this is what I need you to get. Thank you. I want to stay, stay standing, please. Thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. You know why? Because the rest of these people who are sitting down wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. If it wasn't for your witness. If it wasn't for your giving. If it wasn't for your marches. So I want to thank you because it started with you. It started with you. And I need y'all to get this. It started with you. It all starts with you. And God wants to use you like he's used these people right here. And he's built on what he's already, he's built on the witness that he started with. Are y'all with me today? So it started with me and my wife in our bedroom. But then these people showed up. And so we witnessed to them. And they witnessed to somebody. Now, if you came in 2014 at all, please stand up. If you came in 2015 at all, please stand up. If you showed up to this church in 2015. Now, those people are... Those people are standing because these people stood. Are y'all with me today? Do you understand that? And those of you who are sitting, you are sitting on a foundation that was laid by these people's wit. Are y'all with me today? Now, if you, come on y'all, don't leave me now. If you got here in 2016, stand up. Come on, yeah, yeah. If you got here in 2017, stand up. Come on, come on, we can celebrate God for them because everybody else who is here is here because of you. If you got here in 2018, stand up. Come on, we can celebrate God. If you got here in 2019 or maybe this is your first time here, I want everybody here to stand up because God is calling you to be a witness. Come on and clap your hands all over this. God's called you to be a witness. 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 And as we prepare today, I, I, I want you to really think about how God can use you in this season. We ask you to do three simple things. And the offering team is going to be going around passing out these uh, forms. We ask you to do three simple things. The first thing we ask you to do is pray. Just pray about possibly worshiping with us. This is what our worship looks like on Christmas. Yeah, we'll sing songs and we'll clap and we'll do all this stuff, but we want to give an offering that reflects his worship. We want to give an offering that reflects our warfare, and we want to give an offering that reflects our witness. I want you to pray about getting that number in your head. If it's sacrificial, I want it to be sacrificial, but if $5 is sacrificial, amen, then let it be $5. But for some of y'all, God's been too good for you. God's been too good to you. And you're trying to calculate how to give somebody a Christmas present. You're trying to calculate what, what else you got to do, who else you got to buy for. And God said, no, no, I'm here right now. Break the box open. He said, he told his disciples, he said, you're going you're gonna to miss it. See, there's always going to be somebody who needs. There's always going to be somebody who wants. But today I want you to make a commitment about what you're going to give to Jesus. The second thing we said is believe. We believe in naming our seed. I don't go into a seed store and say, I need some seed, please. I go into a seed store and say, I want to grow corn, right? And then the seed person says, okay, well, here are corn kernels that grows corn. You say, I want to grow cauliflower. They give you seed for that. So, so what I want you to do is write on that card in reflection to the seed that you're asking God to bless you with. God is not a respecter of person. He's a respecter of faith. I want you to write something on that card that, that you're praying for, that we can join in faith with you. And the last thing is commit. 
We want you to commit to whatever it is, whatever that number is that God put in your heart. Listen, I do not want you to give any more than what God is calling you to give right now. The Bible says be a cheerful giver. I don't want anybody in here giving begrudgingly. So if you don't want to give or you don't got it to give, do me a favor. Just write what you're praying for on that card, and, and I still want you to drop it in the offering. But there's some of y'all that God is worth more to you. Jesus is worth more to you. And you're going to make a sacrificial gift today. I thank you for being here with us. Allow us, help us to do more things in the future. Help us to buy buses. Help us to take food all around the city. This is your obligation. I'm asking you to break the box open today. I'm asking you to break the box open today. My wife and I, we've already decided and we started with $1,000. We're just going to sow $1,000 into the church. I'm not asking you to sow $1,000, but if you have $1,000, sow $1,000. If God put that on your heart, you can do that. If God put 500 on your heart, you can do that. If God put 50 on your heart, you can do that. Listen, if you have your cell phone, you can text any amount, any amount to 84321. 84321. You can text any amount to 84321. Or we can get this on the screen. You can just go to give.godchases.cc. Go to give.godchases.cc. We're going to ask, we're going to ask, I'm going to ask the ushers to take over here. But I want you to take the time and really fill out your card, and I want you to pray over it. If you're here with your wife or your husband, pray with your wife or your husband. If you're here with, by yourself, pray over it yourself. I want you to make a commitment. I want you to make a commitment related to his worship, related to your warfare. I want you to make a commitment today. Come on, we're going to pray together. We're going to pray together. We're going to pray together. And then we're going to sing, and we're going to worship. We're going to lift our hands, and we're going to enjoy Jesus together. Come on, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, God. I thank you for each and every person under the sound of my voice. I thank you for their lives, God. I thank you for what you've called them to do here at this church, God. You said no one comes to the Father unless they are drawn by you. I thank you for the hundreds of people who call God chases their church, Lord Jesus, who calls this their home, God. Lord, I pray that none of them are offended today. But I believe, God, I believe, God, that you're calling us to a new level, a new level of faith. A new level of giving. A new level, God. I believe you're calling us to a new level, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I, I, I'm going to lead the charge as the pastor. I want to lead the charge to take our church to a new level, Lord Jesus. Lord, so we're believing you for more, God. We're believing you for better. We're believing you for greater, Lord Jesus. And we're going to release our worship to you, Lord. Lord, we love you. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Is everybody ready to give? Do me a favor. Can we all stand on our feet before we give? Can we just give God a praise right now with whatever you got? Come on. Let's just give God a praise with whatever you got. Come on. With, with whatever you have. Come on. With whatever you have. All right. I think we're going to start on the sides. Come on. Come on. We're going to ask everybody to come around. Even if you don't have it to give, I want you to drop your card in. Even if you don't have anything to give, we just want to pray with you. Come on. Come on. We just want to pray with you. We just want to pray with you. We just want to pray with you. Come on. Come on. In. After you've given... After you've given, I want you to go back to your seat and lift your hands and sing this with us as long as I am breathing. I will always worship you. I'll always worship you, God. Come on, God, chase us. And I will, come on, and I will, yeah. Not be.
Here's my worship. Here's my worship. Come on. Stand on your feet and lift your hands. Let's worship God. Worship. All of my worship. God, we receive it today, God. We receive it. So we give it all to you. Come on. Here's my worship. All of my Come on, receive my words. All of my for being our faithful father. We thank you for being consistent even when we're not, God. We thank you for being everything that we need, God. Amen. Hallelujah. He is my faithful father calling me out of the darkness. Thank God, Jesus. Come on. And I
Jesus help. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus in here. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus in here. Come on, what's his worship? Come on. What's your warfare? Come on. Come on, what's your witness? Come on, come on. What's his worship? What's your warfare? What's your warfare? What's your warfare? What's your warfare? Now watch his witness, come on. Thank you, Jesus. My great defender, my strong tower, he has never lost a battle. My great, come on, make it personal. My strong tower, come on. My strong tower. He has never lost a battle. He has never lost. Come on, one more time. My great defender. When I'm being accused, my strong tower. When they lied on me, he's never lost. He's he has never lost a battle. He has never lost a battle. My great defender. He delivered me. He's my strong tower. My strong tower. He's never lost a battle. I love you, Jesus. I worship and I just want to tell you this Christmas, Lord, I love you more than anything. Not just a baby, a God in my life. I love you. I worship and I God chases, I can't hear you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. More than One more time. I just need to make sure you got it right here. Come on, lift your voice and say, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, God. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love Come on. Lord, I love you. Come on, man, right here. Come on, lift your hands with us, please. Lift your hands with us and say, I love you, Jesus. Time say, I love you, Jesus. I 
Come on and tell them you love them. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Has he been good to you? I want to finish, but I don't know if y'all got I, I, I have this in my spirit. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord I'm feeling churchy. I don't know why I say it. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, you got it. Right here. Break that right here. I wanted to do the Fred Hammond version, but y'all, y'all took me back, church. <laughs> oh, JJ here. JJ here. Come on. sing Jingle Bells again. We're going to sing the Jingle Bells This Is The Day mashup. No. Okay. Y'all, we got uh, Santa and Mrs. Claus here. Y'all make sure y'all get your kids out to go take a picture with them. Don't, we're going to celebrate Jesus today, okay? Y'all get all that superstition out and all about the Christmas tree and Santa and all this stuff. We celebrated Jesus all day, didn't we? Now we're going to allow our kids to enjoy their youth, right? Yeah, amen. Amen. Can y'all do me a favor? Lock hands with somebody. We're going we gonna to get ready to get out of here. Lock hands with somebody. Listen, I know, I know they had announcements and stuff. We're, we're a little late, guys. But listen, uh, the Coats and Coco have been postponed. Well, the Coco is still happening, right? 
the cocoa is still happening here, but uh, the blessing bags have been postponed, okay? We're going to let y'all know at a later date. We're going to go out and, uh, and give those blessing bags out to the homeless and, and, uh, and do what we do as a church, amen? We're going to do what we do, amen? Y'all heard some of the stuff we do today, right? Amen. Don't you do you love your church? Look at your neighbor and say, "Do you love your church?" <laughs> if they don't go here, it's okay. Say, "I don't go here." <laughs> Thank y'all for being here today, baby. You want to say? Okay, beautiful. Squeeze the hand of that person next to you. Listen, again, we want to say Merry Christmas to everybody. We hope you have a Christmas filled with joy and happiness. Do not go into financial. Do not go into financial debt trying to buy people Christmas presents. That's not the way. Amen. 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 We're going to love everybody. Some people need a I love you for Christmas. You know what I'm getting you? A I love you. Oh, I love you. God bless you. I love you. I'm working on some stuff. I'm trying to get my faith right. Amen. Amen. Anybody trying to get their faith right in here? Squeeze the hand again of that person next to you. I want you to pray for them like you want them to pray for you. I want you to pray for their life, their job, their houses, their clothes. I want you to pray for their Christmas, that they have a wonderful Christmas. On three, two, one, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Let's pray together, God chasers. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We love you. We give you glory. Lord, we ask that you bless the offering that we gave today. Each and every person who gave sacrificial, God, Lord, I pray, God, that you bless their houses, you bless their land. You bless them, God. You cover them and keep them, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we pray that you be glorified on this Christmas. Let it be about you, God. You are the game changer. Lord, we love you. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. I need you to give five hugs before you leave this room.